Hey guys, it's Poe back again with another video. Today we're going off on the topic of space and rockets once again. Well, they did it. They had their critics, but just like almost everything else Elon says SpaceX is going to do, they did it. Albeit it wasn't as graceful as hoped. The rocket did blow up. But to be fair, that was several minutes after it had landed, so the landing still counts. SpaceX has been working on Starship for several years now at their Boca Chica site. There have been three official flights of Starship prototypes to date, if you don't count the hop tests. All three have ended with an explosion. But what a good many people who don't follow this type of thing regularly don't know or don't realize is that these three flights have still been massive successes. To explain this, I have to give you some information on the rest of the space launch industry. Almost everyone else in this industry, NASA, Boeing, and all the rest, go about designing and building vehicles with a fundamentally different approach. This is one of the reasons NASA's SLS is years behind schedule, although there are many other factors contributing to SLS's delay, including the dreaded politics. What all of these other companies do differently when building a space launch system or spacecraft, especially one that will be rated for human flight, is instead of rapidly building a prototype and testing it to failure, they test each subcomponent along the way. The best example to give is when SLS is complete, it will be rated for human flight on its very first orbital flight. SpaceX instead builds a vehicle and then tests it all the way to its human flight rating. This means we will see many orbital flights of Starship prior to any humans actually being on board. It's simply a difference of philosophy. Which rocket would you prefer to ride on? A rocket that has had only one orbital flight before, but at the same time each component and subcomponent has been tested multiple times to its failure point? Or would you prefer to ride on a rocket that hasn't had much testing on its single components by themselves, but has had several orbital flights already? There isn't a right answer. The advantage that SpaceX gets by using this rapid prototype testing is when an issue is discovered, a redesign can be very easily implemented in the next version. If someone like Lockheed discovered a similar issue during the testing of a new rocket, it might take years to implement the redesign and get back to flying. One downside to SpaceX's approach is their failures are on display for the entire world to see. People read a headline from one of the major news outlets that says SpaceX had one of their new rockets explode during testing. And since we live in a world where most people don't follow up that headline by reading the actual article, they may assume that this is horrible news and that SpaceX is failing as a whole with this new rocket. The truth is, while SpaceX would prefer their prototype not fail and explode, the goal during testing is the data that they are able to capture during the process. This data may help reprogram an algorithm for how the engine fires during a certain situation, or how an aerosurface reacts to turbulence during the descent through the atmosphere. This is all extremely valuable data, and you better believe these prototypes are outputting an absolutely ludicrous amount of data during these test flights. Now let's talk a little bit about what I think may have caused serial number 10 to explode after landing. Now keep in mind, this is just a guess on my part, on the videos that I've seen. I'm not a rocket engineer. I'm not even a mechanical engineer. Take my opinion with a grain of salt. Someone like Scott Manley is much more qualified to speak on this topic and probably will make a video if he hasn't already. After serial number 8 and 9 failed to land due to one of the two engines used for the flip maneuver and landing failed to continue producing thrust, SpaceX decided on serial number 10 flight they would ignite all three engines for landing, and then once confirming they were producing the correct amount of thrust, they would cut one of the three engines off. It's necessary to cut one of the three because if all three continued firing, there would be too much thrust for the vehicle to actually land. When serial number 10 was ready to flip and land, the computers on board gave the command to ignite all three engines, and all three engines ignited. After the flip was completed, it appears one of the engines then cut off. I'm assuming this was commanded by the flight computer since it was able to verify nominal thrust from all three engines. Then moments after that, a second engine cut. This left only one engine producing thrust. Now the camera did cut away, so we can't tell whether or not serial number 10 was able to reignite a second engine. Was SpaceX planning to land with only one engine and purposefully cut two engines after the flip maneuver? 
Regardless, it came down hard. This is kind of ironic to me because they call this a soft landing when in actuality it was anything but soft. Another problem serial number 10 faced on landing was its poorly designed landing legs. This isn't my personal opinion, but rather publicly stated by Elon Musk. He's not happy with the current design of the landing legs. You better believe SpaceX is pushing their best engineers to come up with something much better as we speak. Unfortunately though, during SN10's landing, it appeared not all of the landing legs stayed in their locked position after deploying. This caused the rocket to end up at a very heavy tilt once landed. In my opinion, due to this hard, soft landing, it likely damaged something on the vehicle which led to the rapid unscheduled disassembly. Unfortunately, without more information from SpaceX, we can't even begin to make a guess on exactly what happened to serial number 10. That said, serial number 10 made an awesome sacrifice so that the next prototype can build on the data captured from its flight. SpaceX isn't failing. They are innovating. In the words of Elon Musk, if you aren't failing, you aren't innovating enough, and I wholeheartedly believe that. Look at what SpaceX has been able to accomplish over the last decade. Do you remember how many people, including experts, said that they would not be able to propulsively land a Falcon 9 booster and reuse it? Now there are boosters from Falcon 9 that have made six or seven reflights. All I can say is we are in the golden age of rockets and rocket reusability. In my previous video, I talked about Rocket Lab's new Neutron rocket that will be reusable. Things are going to continue moving forward until eventually we look at rockets that aren't reusable as the oddity. Hopefully, I'm able to see this in my lifetime. And that's going to do it for this one. Please let me know down in the comments if you have a different theory for serial number 10's demise. Also, I'm curious what you think about how SpaceX is portrayed in the media after one of their prototypes explodes. Do you think people who aren't enthusiasts see these tests as actual failures for SpaceX? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. And we will see you in the next one.